Ken Hill, Ken Hill Coaching. And we've done a series of videos uh, with some data that have just done some, some rider comparisons and they've been kind of fun to take a look at. And I get the question asked all the time, comparing uh, bikes to cars, because um, I do quite a bit of car, car instruction and car driving. I've got my own little track car. And so I get a lot of comparisons uh, on it. So I thought it'd be fun. Yeah, let's do a couple of graphs um, with uh, cars versus bikes. Um, and it's, it's pretty surprising. Um, it's not as surprising as you think with some of the things, but other things are pretty gobsmacking. Um, so we'll do two comparisons. We're gonna do, and of course, let's, let, we need to make sure we're comparing apples to apples here. So the first graph is we're comparing um, a, a really good motorcycle with a, with a really good car, but nothing fancy. Um, it's a Triumph 765. Um, with basically fairly stock with a set of uh, good grippy tires versus um, a 2021 Camaro SS1LE, very good GT car, right? But also very, very stock. Um, doesn't have much to it, but gets around the track pretty well. So yeah, and then we'll, we'll compare that graph and then we'll kind of go big and we'll compare the Camaro to a, um, a ZX10 uh, super basically stock 1000 bike. Um, and that, that's a very fun graph to take a look at. So yeah, let's just, uh, let's just dive into it and get this, uh, get this set up for everybody. So, all right, here we go. This is the Triumph uh, versus the Camaro. And we're just, we're just basically starting off. We're, we're going to look at the speed graph here. So this is the Ridge Motorsports Park. And this particular configuration is we use the chicane. So I thought, yeah, let's, 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 you know, let's, let's give a little bit of a um, little bit more of the corners and starting and stopping and all that kind of stuff. So here we, we uh, get set up here and here um, we have the Triumph in blue, uh, the Camaro in red. And the lap time is very similar. The lap time is basically within a second. And you can start to see some interesting things. So one thing that, that I think is a little bit of a misconception with cars is that, oh my God, they have all this, you know, so much more corner speed and they're all corner speed. And, you know, it's crazy. Regardless, the car still has to be slowed and pointed. And yeah, if we had a big variation, let's say we had maybe a Miata in here versus a ZX-10 or, or, or something that was really, really skewed or a Ninja 400 versus a, a you know, a GT car um, be a little bit different, but I'm trying to keep it apples to apples. And again, regardless of the bike or the car, there's a place where it has to be slowed and pointed. And what you really, the, you know, some of the things that you really start to see is like, we'll just kind of take coming up the front straight away is that even though this is a um, essentially a stock uh, Triumph 765, how fast it is. And I mean, the Camaro is not a slow, you know, Camaro is not slow. It's 455 horsepower and um, gets around the track really well, but it just, it just gets, I mean, it just gets trounced um, by the acceleration. The initial acceleration is not really too, is really not too bad. Um, and there's some places where um, we'll see where it, it um, is, is fairly equal. So, okay, coming down here into the chicane, um, the, the car breaks later. Through the first chicane, the speed is about equal. And then, yeah, because of the more grip, the car can roll through the second part of the chicane um, with a little bit more speed, um, six, six miles an hour or so more. Acceleration off is about the same. And then again, you can just see the Triumph has so much more acceleration. Um, Camaro decelerates later, um, goes through the kink of the chicane, um, or turn one about the same, and then fairly equal um, coming down here into turn two into three. And then you start to see where the big grip, the grip is, is starts to be a big deal. And to be fair, the Camaro um, was not set up on super crazy sticky tires. It had a very good tire on it, kind of like a kind of like a Q3 type of a tire, a Q4, where the, the Triumph had more of a, um, um, like a track day slick on it. 
but yeah, you can see some pretty big differences in here in corner speed. Um, and then the bike takes over on the acceleration. And again, how much later the car uh, goes to the brakes uh, versus the, the bike. I was surprised by this. Um, I looked at multiple graphs on this and it actually, it was fairly shocking um, where they get in about the same, but the roll speed through six is not that much different. Um, a little bit more on the, a little bit on the exit, but not that much different. And again, you can see the extra speed that the 765 has coming down into the hill. And of course, the, the car breaks much, much later. Um, through the middle of eight, yeah, you're, now you're starting to see a little bit more of that roll speed, um, that grip right down there. And yeah, it gets off the corner a little bit better because of that speed. But then again, the, the speed of the bike just takes off. This one was fairly dramatic about how much later the car can keep accelerating versus the bike. Um, turn 11, identical, literally identical. Um, coming into 12, car breaks later, a little bit more speed through 12, 13 is the same. And then, yeah, you get to see a little bit of difference in here. And of course, acceleration come on in the front straight. So it was surprising. It wasn't that much different. And I, I thought this was actually a, a pretty darn fair um, comparison with the, the two, the two, um, the two sort of similar vehicles. <laughs> so this is where this uh, this gets to be a little bit fun. So we we now uh, take the car and uh, we put it against a ZX10, and uh, now we start to see some some interesting things. And um, of course, the ZX10 um, it was basically like a stock 1000 bike. It was it was a nice bike, but nothing crazy. So I also threw the throttle graph up here to, 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 as well. And um, the lap time on the bike was a very good lap time for, for the Ridge. I mean, it wasn't, you know, it would have been a good club race lap time. I think it was a 43 or 44 or something like that. So no, and this is no chicane because um, I wanted to show the speed difference on the front straight. Uh, so it was a good, it was a good time. Um, and the, the difference in the speed is gobsmacking. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's well over 30 mile an hour difference. Um, crazy. And of course, you'll see how, I mean, you can just see how fast the bike is. Of course, the car is going to break much later, um, has more grip, and it's going at a slower speed. Um, again, similar, similar trait through turns um, uh, one and two, three. And again, we see that more grip of the car um, coming down out of four, um, out of five. And again, the acceleration of the bike is just crazy. Um, past a break earlier than say the Triumph. Um, similar speed speed trace on the D cell. And this is what is interesting, right? The bigger bike, a little bit slower in the corner, uh, then it needs to be a little bit slower in the corner than say the 765, which rolled through the corner very well. Um, now we see a little bit of a speed difference here and even getting the, getting the, the big bike pointed, right? There's a place where the bike has to be slowed a little bit more deliberately to get the bike to accelerate. And you can really see it here in this graph. Um, I guess it begs the question, we should get up a, a 600 versus a thousand graph. That'll be a fun one as well. Um, and then coming at us, um, down into eight. Yeah. You can just see the difference there. Um, I'm surprised the speed wasn't higher here. Um, and I, I'd have to go back and look at the lap to see if there was traffic uh, or what there. Again, the acceleration, braking later, a um, little bit more speed into, into 11, um, 12. Yeah, it's sort of the same picture. The acceleration on some of these low speed corners is, is just gobsmacking between the bike and the car. And this is not a slow car, right? It's 400 and almost 60 horsepower. So it's not a slow car. Uh, and then, of course, the acceleration coming onto the front straight is also absolutely, absolutely nutty. The fun part is the throttle graph. And here we're riding a thousand cc bike, whatever the thing makes, you know, 190, 200 horsepower. And how little time is spent at full throttle. You can see the car, car is in red, um, the bike is in blue. And basically, if the car is pointed anywhere in the right direction, it's forward. Um, and, and we can see that where how little time at, especially at this track, um, the bike spends at, uh, at full throttle. And, and even again, um, this bike has got kind of stock electronics. Um, so it doesn't have a lot of uh, intervention 
but still accelerates extremely well. And again, the, the amount of acceleration, even, even the amount of acceleration that the, the bike has at not, compared to the car, not even at close to full throttle, it just shows you the power to weight ratio of the bikes is absolutely gobsmacking. Um, so yeah, anyway, fun little throttle graph uh, to show you what's going on there. And uh, yeah, that's a thousand cc bike versus uh, versus the car. Quite a bit of a lap time difference. I think it was about a three or four second a lap difference on um, the bike uh, to the car. And it's it's also dramatic. I, I I looked at it, but if you look at just the the difference on the front straightaway in acceleration time, um, it was near three seconds a difference on just the front straightaway. Two point eight, I think, um, on the front straightaway alone um, in acceleration. So crazy, uh, just a crazy, crazy fun number. So anyway, thought you uh, thought everyone might enjoy that, which is the car versus the uh, the bike. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely do some more, uh, do some more fun videos like this.